This lesson is about kinetic energy. Um, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand kinetic energy stores. You should also be able to calculate kinetic energy and link in energy transfers. And by the end of this lesson, we're also going to look at linking gravitational potential energy with kinetic energy. But before we start, just have a look at this roller coaster ride. And um, whilst you're watching it, just see if you can work out what the energy transfers are that are taking place. by watching that that it started off with kinetic energy kinetic energy taking the cart up to a height which was transferring the kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy that gravitational potential energy was then transferred back into kinetic energy on the way down and then back from kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy on the way up and this transfer of kinetic energy to gravitational energy takes place all the time in lots of things as well as roller coasters so we're going to look at kinetic energy first, and this is an equation that you may have come across before. So the kinetic energy of object just means anything that's moving. So anything with mass that has a velocity will have kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy equation is kinetic energy is half the mass times the velocity squared. And the kinetic energy, remember, is because it's energy, it will always be in joules. Mass is always in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second. So be aware of that when you're doing exam questions in case you need to change units. So we're gonna have a little go at these couple of questions. If you want to just pause the video here and have a go yourself, then do so. And I'm just going to go through these couple of equations just to help you be able to use the kinetic energy equation. So I've already written down my um, triangles here, as you can see. And what we were looking at in the first one, we were given a mass of 60 kilograms. And the half doesn't change, so we're going to bring that down. And then we were given a velocity of 6 meters per second. And that needs to be squared. So that would give us 6 squared. So we'd have half times 60 times 6 squared, which is 36, which would give us a kinetic energy of 1,080 joules. So if we look at the second equation, and the only thing that changed here was the velocity had doubled. So let's have a look at this. So we had half times the mass of 60, times, and this time it was 12 meters per second, so the velocity has doubled, and that needs to be squared, so that would give us half times 60 times 144, which would give us 4,320 joules of energy. Now, one of the important things to notice here um, is the fact that the when the speed doubles, the kinetic energy increases fourfold. So, and so what we can see here is that when the velocity doubles, the kinetic energy quadruples. And so the last question on here just said that assuming that George had um, mass, is, mass is less than Amy's, then the kinetic energy would be reduced. And when it comes to mass, it's directly proportional. So if we were to half the mass, then it would just be half the kinetic energy. So again, the only way to really get a grip of these is to actually start doing them and start practicing them. And so the best thing to, to do is to pause the video now, have a go at these four questions. The first two are fairly straightforward. 
they just plug into the equation and the second two will require you to rearrange that equation. Pause the video now, I'll come back and show you how they're done. So our first two were just plug in to the equation. So I've already written down my um, triangles here. And so the first one we were given, so the half doesn't change. We were given a mass of 70. And we need to times that by the velocity we were given, which was eight meters per second. Remember, we then need to square that, which gives us 64. So the answer to the first one was 2,240 joules. And again, the second one it was a straightforward plug into the equation. So we've got half times the mass we were given of 2,000 times the velocity, which we were given as 27. We need to square that to give us 729. And again, that will give us 1,000 times 729, which gives the answer as 729,000 joules or 729 kilo joules. Okay, so the third question um, requires us to rearrange the equation. So we're going to plug in what we already know. We were given an energy of 3,500 joules. We were given a velocity of 10 meters per second. And if we square that, we're going to get, so 10 squared equals 100. And we were asked for the mass. So we're going to link those two together to give us half mass to rearrange. So to rearrange the equation, we cover up the half mass, which leaves us with half mass equals the kinetic energy divided by velocity squared. So if we plug the numbers in, we get 3,500 divided by 100, and that will give us 35. Now remember, this is half the mass. So if we want the mass, we're going to have to times both sides by 2. So the mass would equal 35 times two, which means the mass equals 70 kilograms. For question four, again we were given the energy. So the energy was 187.5. We were also given a mass and the mass we were given was 15. But this time we were asked to find the speed, the velocity. So if we rearrange this equation, we're going to cover up the V squared, which gives us energy divided by half the mass. So V squared equals energy divided by, don't forget your brackets, half times the mass. And so if we plug the numbers into that, what we get is 187.5 divided by half times 15. And again, if we plug that in, we can get V squared equals 25. Now the important thing here is to remember this is V squared is 25. So to get V, we need to square root the answer. So the square root of 25 equals five meters per second, and that's our velocity. And that becomes really important when we start to 
link these to the gravitational potential energy ones as well. So this is the answers written down if you just want to check your own answers. So what we're going to look at now is the gravitational potential energy equation. Now you should remember this one as well. And this is gravitational potential energy equals mass times height times the gravitational field strength. Now in most exam questions, they'll take gravitational field strength as being 10. And just to remind you that units are important, gravitational potential energy is in joules, the mass is in kilograms, height is always in metres, and gravitational field strength is in newtons, newtons per kilogram. So what they will often do in GCSM questions is they will often ask you to link the two together. And so if you think about our roller coaster from the start, if we're given the gravitational potential energy and the all the kinetic energy, we should be able to work out the transfer between the two. Now in GCSE questions, they will assume that it's a 100% transfer and that none of the energy has been dissipated as heat. We know in reality this is not true because otherwise a roller coaster would go on forever. But what we do know in exam questions is they would tell you to imagine that actually the kinetic energy that was transferred to the top of the roller coaster is 100%, in which case when we're at the top of the roller coaster, it would have the same gravitational potential energy as it had in kinetic energy. So a real challenge now for you. Have a little go at this two-step question. You're gonna need both, um, both of the equations to help you. And what you'll need to do is imagine we're going to use gravity as 10 here. Have a go, I'll come back and show you how these work. Okay, so for this question, we're going to need both equations. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down my triangles. So the kinetic energy equation is energy kinetic half times mass times velocity squared. I'm also going to write down gravitational potential energy one as well. And so we have mass times height times gravity, and this one is our gravitational potential energy. So looking at what we've, we've been given, we're gonna plug those into our equation. So I've been given a mass of five, and I've been given a height of 10, and I know that gravity is 10. So straight away, I can times these together and that will give me my energy. And so my energy here is 500 joules. So the question they were asking you was what's the speed? So I'm going to now transfer what I can from here into my kinetic energy equation. So assuming that energy is 100% transferred that would give me 500 joules of kinetic energy. We know the mass, we were given the mass as five and the half doesn't change. So now we need to find V squared. That's our question mark. So again, like we did previously, we rearrange the equation. So V squared equals the kinetic energy divided by, don't forget the brackets, half times mass, so it's half times five. So plugging in all of the numbers, we have 500 divided by 2.5. And that gives us V squared as equaling 200. Now, remember, this is V squared. So we need to find V by using the square root of 200, which gives me 14.14 rounded to two decimal places. OK, 
Okay, so hopefully you now have an understanding of kinetic energy and how the speed changes when kinetic energy changes and also be able to calculate kinetic energy and be able to use calculations to show energy transfers.